Chicago Bears photo by Joe Robb. Getty Images At some point during the 2019 NFL Draft, the Chicago Bears will likely send a representative to the podium to select the team's next running back. When they do, the name that could be called is Texas A. Travion's story and journey to the NFL is a remarkable one full of much tragedy, but even more perseverance. When he was just six years old, his grandfather, a man who helped raise him and turned him onto the game of football, suddenly passed away. Travion would subsequently go to live with his aunt and uncle, Joyce and Kevin Davis. The Davis family lived in Houston and so Travion, to whom family is so important, chose to stay close to home and attend Texas A. Unfortunately, the home where he spent most of his childhood was destroyed in Hurricane Harvey. What followed were many anxious hours and days as there were extended periods of time where Travion was unable to reach his family after the storm. Thankfully, he finally got word that everyone was safe and sound while he was in California getting ready to take on UCLA in the season opener of his sophomore year. All he did was rush for 203 yards on 22 attempts, good for a 9.2 per carry average, and score two touchdowns, a profile in focus, determination, and perseverance. In fact, everyone I've come across who personally knows Travion gushes about him not just as a football player but as a person. The impact he has had on the lives of those he's encountered in his young life becomes apparent almost immediately. It became apparent to me as well when I sat down with him recently to discuss his journey to this point, and what lies ahead. Page 2 Chicago Bears Photo by Cooper Neal, Getty Images While Travion Williams is an exceptional person off the field, to focus only on that would do a disservice to his incredible talents on the field, talents which make him a great fit in Matt Nagy's offense. Let's start at the line of scrimmage. Williams has very good vision to see the play develop and set up the defenders in the second level. He moves extremely well at the line to find the hole and once he does, can burst through it like a cloud of dust. Many of these skills were on full display in the game against LSU on November 24, in which Williams ran the ball 35 times for 198 yards, 105 after contact, forced four missed tackles, scored two touchdowns, and had eight runs of 10 yards or more. However, there was one play in particular that showcased some of his strengths and why there is so much to like about his game. Take a look at this video at the 146 mark. The Aggies have the ball in the first quarter on LSU's 10-yard line. It's first and goal in a scoreless game. Williams takes the handoff and heads up the middle. The defensive tackle sees this and tries to shed his blocker to the inside. However, Williams bounces sideways, showing outstanding agility to avoid the tackle. Then, seemingly from a standstill, he accelerates remarkably quick through the line. As he approaches the goal line, he's met by two LSU defenders at the two-yard line, which he takes with him into the end zone. His vision, acceleration, and power were all on display in this one play. Another favorable trait Travion possesses is his breakaway speed. There is nothing more frustrating as a fan than to see a running back hit a crease with nothing but daylight in front of him, only to be caught from behind. Well, there are no such concerns with Williams as you can see below. He has the breakaway speed to gash the defense for big yardage. Finally, there are two other qualities that make Williams an attractive option for the Bears. First, he is probably the best pass-blocking running back in the draft. He isn't afraid to mix it up with even the biggest defenders, which allows him to stay on the field for all three downs. Second, he is terrific as a pass-catcher out of the backfield, something that is a must in Nagy's defense. Not only does he have great hands, but he's been used split out wide at Texas A. Last year alone he caught 27 passes for 278 yards. On balance, Williams is a very well-rounded back who possesses a ton of desirable traits. He is someone that could easily show out at the NFL Combine and emerge as a household name by the time festivities are over in Indianapolis.
We talked about the combine and other topics when I sat down with Travion recently. Page 3 Chicago Bears Photo by Joe Robbins, Getty Images, Windy City, DWC Thanks for taking the time to sit down with us as you prepare for the NFL Combine. I hear you're out in San Diego training. How is that going? Travion Williams, TW, great man. I'm really attacking it. I'm out here working out with Exos which is a great organization helping me get ready for the Combine. We're working out three to four times per day and getting everything right through nutrition and PT and unlocking all of the potential in your body. Way I've been approaching it is that if you want to be a professional you have to train like a professional. DWC, you've overcome a lot of adversity to get to this point. How has that shaped you as a person and a football player? TW, I feel like I've been through a lot of adversity, but at the end of the day it has molded me into a great young man. I've been blessed to have two sets of parents. I have my mom and dad but also my aunt and uncle who I also call mom and dad. Through this process, I've had a great support system from my family and there are three things that are important to me, faith, family, and football. My faith in God has instilled in me the great morals I need to be a great person and not just a great football player. All support I've had it's allowed me to work and have something to grind for on the football field. Everything I do, I grind for my family, and everything I've been through has helped me be a better leader and a better football player. DWC, the game immediately after Hurricane Harvey, you rushed for 203 yards and two touchdowns against UCLA. What was that experience like? TW, that whole experience is something I'll never forget. I was in California preparing for the UCLA game and it was tough knowing my family was going through that back home and I couldn't be there with them to help. But at the same time, I had to be a leader for my team in university. It was hard but it worked out. Materialistic things can be replaced, but the lives of your family can't. But once I knew they were alright I feel like I carried that into the game. I played for them and played my heart out. DWC, besides your aunt and uncle, who are some of the biggest influences in your life growing up. TW, my cousins and my grandfather and grandma. I had a big support system. My grandfather first got me into football around the age of four. We'd be in the backyard throwing the football and I immediately fell in love with it. I'm so thankful he showed me that. DWC, you had a huge jump from your sophomore to junior season. What do you attribute that to? TW, just the grind. Throughout that off-season, I made a list of goals and put them in my reminders. To this day they still pop up. It was just a great season with me and my brothers. And the hiring of Jimbo Fisher. That was pivotal. And we got Jerry Schmidt as our strength and conditioning coach from Oklahoma and he really made a big difference along with that pro-style offense Jimbo Fisher brought. DWC, you seemed to adjust to Jimbo Fisher's new offense really well. Talk to me a little bit about that process and what that was like. TW, it definitely wasn't easy at all learning a new, pro-style offense. Going from a spread offense to a pro-style wasn't easy. The pro-style offense is really complex, but it's nothing that your body can't do. When I was done with my schoolwork I studied my playbook so I didn't have to think on the field, it just became second nature and allowed me to play fast. DWC, what were some of the biggest things you took away from your experience at Texas A? You have to keep the faith and keep grinding. Situations may be tough and things may not be perfect but you can write your own story if you really grind. So you have to set goals and achieve them through hard work and great work ethic. DWC, are there particular running concepts or schemes that fit your game? TW, that pro style offense. It was really fun. I enjoyed zone reads, outside zone, inside zone. When you get in that pro style offense you realize it's really just a numbers game. When you line up you want to get the good numbers where you can get a hat for a hat and be one-on-one -on -one with a safety or corner and make those guys miss. 
I enjoyed all of it because I wasn't just running but catching the ball out of the backfield. I really enjoyed everything about that offense. PWC, your receptions have increased every year. Is that something you've been working on specifically? TW, yeah definitely. Every day after practice it was a big priority for me to stay after practice and catch a few more balls and work on it throughout the off-season. I want to expand my worth to this offense, so anything I could improve on I wanted to do. And with the pro-style offense, we caught the ball out of the backfield a lot and I really enjoyed that. PWC, you were excellent at pass protection and seemed to take a lot of pride in that aspect of your game. Is that fair to say? TW, oh yeah, best in the draft. I take a lot of pride in it because when I first got to college as a freshman people said I couldn't pass protect because I was too small. I really hit the off-season strong and made pass pro one of my top goals and top focuses. I improved my technique and hand strength. I went out this year and had an outstanding year in pass pro. And if anyone has any questions on my pass pro they just need to pull out the tape. PWC, you ran for a school record 1,760 yards, good for third in the nation, and have the second most total scrimmage yards of anyone at the Combine. How are you able to be so productive? TW, really just the grind in the pro-style offense I was in. It carries right over to the NFL so I definitely think it will carry over. TWC, what would you say are some of your strengths as a running back? TW, definitely my vision. Vision is a big time thing in my acceleration. Guys might say I'm short but I'm extremely strong. I squat over 600 pounds. I can make guys miss, I have speed, and can catch the ball. I think those are all some of my strengths. TWC, what separates you from other running backs in this class? TW, I would say consistency. I can be a great player from start to finish, throughout the entire game. I feel like I'm one of the best finishers in the draft. The fourth quarter is pivotal and I get even stronger as the game goes on. So yeah, I feel like that separates me from others in the draft. I just love this game of football and feel like I can make plays happen with or without the ball in my hands. TWC, is there a running back in the NFL you like to model your game after? TW, yeah, it's crazy because me and my boy, AK, Alvin Kamara, that's my guy. We definitely agree that both our games are similar. We definitely feel like we both have the same kind of game makeup. When we played against each other head-to-head -head my freshman year, we were going back and forth so I definitely feel like we have the same skill set. TWC, what are your goals for the NFL Combine? TW, I just really want to showcase my talents athletically. I feel like my tape matches up so I just want to showcase my speed at an elite level and my agility as well as catching the ball out of the backfield. I also want to make sure my 40 pops off the sheet and showcase my hands. DWC, is there an aspect of your game that you think might be underrated that perhaps people are sleeping on a little bit? TW, change of direction. I know a lot of people underrate my change of direction, but I feel like at the combine I'll really showcase my agility and change of direction. DWC, what are some of your interests off the field? TW, I like photography. When I'm not around football I like to take pictures. Someone says a picture is worth a thousand words and I definitely feel like I want my picture to be that thousand words. DWC, with so much discussion about mock drafts and evaluations, how do you stay focused? TW, just stay true to myself and take it day by day. If I just do what I have to, stay dialed in and prepare at a high level things will work out. DWC, did you get a chance to watch any Chicago Bears games last year? TW, yeah I got to watch a good amount. I was really impressed with Tariq Cohen. They really like to use their backs out of the backfield. They like to put the ball in his hands, put him in space, and let him make plays. 
BWC, what are your thoughts about possibly playing in Chicago? TW, I would definitely enjoy it. They really trust their running backs and take pride in their running backs. They take pride in getting them the ball and they trust them. So if Chicago gave me that opportunity I would be excited to do that for them. DWC, have you had any discussions with the Bears? TW, yes, I've been in contact with their scouts there and they're excited about me as well and what I can do. So I'm excited to see how this works out and how everything goes. Next Bears pre-combined mock draft DWC, what are your plans for draft night? TW, still deciding on that but probably have a party back home in Houston, Texas. Do something with the family. I don't want this moment just to be big for myself but to be big for my family. They really helped me and allowed me to be in this position so I want this to be special for them as well.